So coming up later this year is going to be Dana White's Contender Series 2024, and I believe the first episode is going to be of August the 13th. And at the moment, we are going to start finding out of the fights that are going to be taking place. In fact, three fights have already been announced. So what I'm doing right now is just talking about every single prospect that I've had my name on. I've had my eye on for the last few few weeks, I guess you could say, since the end of Dana White's Contender Series 2023. That's when I started compiling this list of fighters that I think are going to be on the Contender Series in 2024. And this one is the welterweight list. And of course, I'm going to miss a lot of people because there are hundreds of prospects out there. And welterweight is a very stacked, stacked weight class in general. So let me know anyone that you think I have missed or anyone that you think should also be on the show. Amiran Gogaladze is the only re returning fighter I think I've got on here. He fought in the 2022 season and he did end up losing to Darius Flowers. I think he is committed to an Octagon tournament at the moment, but I have seen the UFC sign people from Octagon before. So maybe if he does get through Leandro Silva, you might see him, but he is a very dynamic striker that I do think you will see in the UFC at some point, even if it isn't this year. Samanda Muradov is a fighter that needs to sign to the UFC and immediately because this guy is so, so good. I think that Samanda Muradov is honestly one of the better welterweights on the planet in general. And word on the street is that the UFC was very interested in signing with him, but unfortunately he had visa issues. So he's waiting on getting his visa, and then apparently when he gets his visa, the UFC is going to give him a contract, but it's only been verbally agreed to. It's all a little bit up in the air, but if you didn't want to just sign him straight up, you could definitely give him some sort of big matchup on the Contender Series, because this guy is good, man. He sent this, spent the very start of his career taking on some pretty top competition, a 10-0 opponent, and then he beat a 19-3 opponent, and then he beat a 19-4 opponent, Gian Sekera, and this is where I found out about him on the Road to UFC tournament. Since then, I guess he just hasn't been able to sign, so he's been taking a couple of extra bonus matchups. And also, I think some wrestling fights on the side as well. But yeah, the point is, Samanda Muradov, he's a very, very, very good prospect. Nikola Djokovic is 14-0, and he's from Serbia. 14-0. Do I really need to sell too much, sell you on him a little bit too much more? He's won most of his fights by submission, and he has fought some pretty good opponents, but the funny thing is he's probably fought his best opponents earlier on in his career when he took on a 5-0 guy and also a, another undefeated fighter. Only one undefeated fighter. I am, uh, I'm tripping. <laughs> but yeah, the point is he's just dominating all of these guys that he's fighting. It looks like he's absolutely running through the opponents that he has been given in his local Serbian promotions. A lot of wins by submission in the very first round. And yeah, he's 14-0. I mean, if he wins on the contender series, then you've got a 15-0 welterweight prospect, which would be massive. Carlos Petrozella is a 12-0 prospect. And once again, if he won on the contender series, then you've got a 13-0 prospect from Argentina to potentially build um against some pretty good opponents but what he is doing is he's fighting for samurai fight house in argentina and once again he's just kind of beating everybody that they put in front of him and once again beating them in the first or the second round he has beaten decent opponents throughout there but it does kind of seem like samurai fight house is probably going to start running out of opponents to give him and at that point that's when you know he is going to be ready for ufc level competition all of his wins are by finish. Most of them are in the first or the second round. He seems like a pretty fun guy to have on the roster. Jacoby Smith is an American wrestler, I believe, that is 8-0. And at the moment, he's actually knocking people out silly. Knocked out Jared McLaughlin in 18 seconds. Knocked out Brian Grinnell in over a minute. And aside from that, he does have a lot of... Uh, only a couple wins by decision aside from that he's just knocking people out power in his hands good wrestling to back it up as well this is the kind of perfect guy that the ufc would want to have on their roster stefano paterno i don't think the ufc has many italian fighters on their roster at all and it has been rumored for a relatively long time that the ufc does have interest in hosting a show in italy to do that they're gonna need italian fighters on their roster and once again you've got a guy here who is 17 and 4 has experience against decent levels of competition because he does have a couple fights for Bellator. Once again, has been fighting for local promotions like Venator FC, which is an Italian promotion. Recently beat the American Scotty, Scotty Stockman by submission in round one. 
Eon Serdu over an Octagon, and Eon is a guy that's fought some pretty good guys throughout his career. Stefano Paterno, once again, if he won, you've got an 18-4 and four prospect to build. Rodrigo Cezanado, I believe Rodrigo Cezanado is a little bit older, but he has been running through the Canadian regional scene. In fact, he's actually got another fight booked for later this year. He beat Scotty Stockman himself in the first round in three minutes. And then aside from that, he did win a matchup in BFL, which is a Canadian local promotion. He's got a loss over in Brazil. And before that, he had a little bit of a career in Brazil. And I think he had a little bit of a career in BJJ as well. But Rodrigo Cezanando, he does look like a pretty promising fighter, a pretty decent fighter. And he is making stuff happen by fighting over there at Battlefield Fight League in Canada. Julius Holmes is a 10 and 2 fighter out of the USA. He's 30 years old, so he's in his prime, and he does train at the Fortis on a massive win streak right now. In fact, started his career 0 and 2, just like Jack Della Maddalena, and has built his way all the way up. Just like Jacoby Smith, he has beaten Jared McLaughlin in the second round. He beat Aaron Phillips, who was on the Ultimate Fighter in the third round. And yeah, he's just kind of beating everybody he's fighting. To be fair, hasn't really been given the toughest of competition relatively recently, but Jared McLaughlin is a pretty decent guy that does fight absolutely anybody. And Aaron Phillips, as I said, was given an ultimate fighter opportunity at some point. So the UFC does know who Aaron Phillips is. A lot of early finishes for Julius Holmes. I think he's a guy that you would not mind seeing on the contender series. Islam Dulatov, in general, I believe, is regarded as one of the better welterweight prospects on the planet. 10-1 record with a 6'6 six six height. He's a pretty tall dude. And he does have a little bit of boxing experience, it seems, that I wasn't too familiar with. But he's just knocking people out silly and finishing people silly. Once again, just dominating everybody he's fighting. Dominating guys that he's, that he's been given. He's not really beating the best guys, but he has fought a veteran such as Will Chope, who had like, what's that, like 61 fights at the time. And then this guy who had like 33 fights at the time. Kind of crazy stuff. I mean, a lot of first round finishes. Haven't really seen him tested too much, but that is what the contender series is for. Shamid Khan Magomedov has recently moved to the USA and is making things happen over in the LFA. Before that, he was fighting for Eagle FC, which was Khabib's promotion. I think Eagle FC is still going. It's just going on in Russia and not in the USA anymore. And I believe what happens when these guys from Russia and other countries, when they, when they move to the USA and they start fighting at local American promotions, it's usually to get the UFC's attention. So you know that he's trying to get someone's attention, whether it is PFL, whether it is UFC, he's trying to get a big American promotion's attention by doing this, and he's doing it pretty well. He recently defeated a guy in the first round who was 10-3, and three, beat a 7-2 and two, Bakramon, Bakram John Mashrapov, sorry, and he beat a 3-2 and two opponent in the very first round. A lot of wins, Early on, looks like he's got a bit of a grappler and wrestling background as well in Russia. So Shaman Khan Magomedov, I would hope that he's on the contender series this year. Jeff Grayson's another guy that should be there because he is on a run right now, man. This guy's on an absolute tear. Beat Joey Davis at Bellator by split decision, who was 8-0. And then he defeated Ozzy Alvarez, who was an older guy, but he was the champion of Uriah Faber's A1 combat. And since then, he's just kind of been beating... Pretty good guys. I mean, he beat an 8-2 and two opponent, an 8-3 and three opponent, lost to Max Rochkoff, but Max Rochkoff is now in Bellator, to my knowledge. And Max Rochkoff is the guy that did fight Austin Hubbard in the UFC a few years ago now. Keep an eye on Jeff Creighton. Amin Ayub is from France. He didn't have a very good record until Damian Lapolis quite infamously popped for, like, a big-time like big time cup issues if you actually look at damian lapolis's record all of these result overturned losses are um fights where i believe he won but because he ended up you know like literally burning a hole through the test cup they've all been turned over so i mean yeah you couple of wins over damian lapolis and um yeah i mean he's in in france the ufc wants more fighters from france he's 28 years old i think it just kind of makes sense Murad Gusainov is a guy I'm actually pretty confident will be on the contender series. It seems like the UFC is wanting a few of these guys that are representing Bahrain in the UFC right now. And it does make sense. I mean, they've got Shimul Gaziev, who they gave a massive push. And then they've got that other guy from Bahrain who won on the contender series, but he is making his debut 
against someone, and I forgot his name, which is kind of embarrassing. He's fighting the Brazilian guy that got knocked out by Zhang Mingyang. Was it Bruno Lopez? No, it wasn't Bruno. The guy that the guy that beat Bruno Lopez. Brinson Ribeiro. He's fighting Brinson Ribeiro. Anyway, the point is, Murad Gassanov, the UFC wants guys from this area of the world, had a big-time amateur career like all of these guys from Bahrain do, dominated everyone he's fought on the regional scene. He's 6-0, perfect for the contender series. It makes sense to me. Mikey England is another guy that just has not fought anybody great in his career, except for most recently, he did take on a pretty decent challenge against the 9-4 and four opponent, but before that, he really wasn't beating good guys, and he does have a pretty questionable loss on that record. But what happens when you do build up a record like this, it does definitely get the UFC's attention, and although he hasn't fought anyone that great, he is absolutely dominating them, so I would Half expect to see him on the contender series. He is just kind of a contender series type of guy with a big time record, but he hasn't really beaten the best guys. So let's see him tested. Kamzat Chapanov is on here. To be honest with you, I probably haven't found the best Russian welterweights, but a lot of the guys from Russia, I know there's a lot of really good Russian fighters in the UFC, but a lot of these guys are locked under exclusive contracts with promotions like ACA and even KSW for some of them. But he's 25 years old, 11 and 4. First name Kamzat. I think he's actually got Kamzat Chimaev's um, attention as well for that reason. But And he lost to a guy called Armin Tarosian. The parody is just unmatched, isn't it? But <laughs> he beat a 10-2 opponent, a 13-6 and 6 opponent. He's looking pretty good over in Russia. Be interesting to see what he could do if he was brought over to the Dana White's Contender Series. 25 years old. Another one is Shemil Shabakov, who is 6-0 himself, 26 years old himself. Undefeated as an amateur, undefeated as a pro. Let's see what he can do. He just beat Matt Vile, which is why he's on this list. And Matt Vile. No, Matt. Oh, he's from New Zealand. I thought he was. Who did this? Who did this? The capital Z. Come on, guys. Matt Vile. Oh, I really thought he was going to be New Zealand's best chance at another fighter in the UFC, aside from Aaron Toe, but... Unfortunately for Matt, he did fight, and he lost to Shamil, and then he lost to Kit Campbell, and it's kind of unfortunately looking like we won't see Matt Wiley in the UFC, which is going to be tough to tough to deal with, but anyway, this isn't about him. Sorry, Matt. It's about Shamil Shikshabekov, who beats him. Let's just put him in the UFC, or, or put him on Dana White's Contender Series to test him first. Alden Bates could be his opponent, because Alden Bates is fighting in Australia at the moment, and has beaten... Jack Della Maddalena, it wasn't 2016, but he still did it, and then he lost to Jack Della Maddalena, so these guys are one and one, Alden Bates has kind of, I believe he's pretty serious about it, wants to have a trilogy with Jack, so maybe if Alden Bates gets into the UFC and then makes a bit of a run, you could see it, he just beat the 5-0 Mikalev, Jonathan Mikalev, who's a really good prospect, beat Stu Deer, who was 9-7, and seven. beat John Vake, who was from New Zealand, and once again, I thought maybe he could make a run himself to the UFC, but hey, He's on a three-fight win streak. I think he's older. Like, I think Alden Bates is kind of mid-30s, but never too late to make a run, and uh, maybe he get a trilogy with JDM. Who knows? Gabriel Souza Galindo is 8-1. Lots of finishes in the first round. Um, That's kind of it, to be honest with you. <laughs> Fourth one championship once. Was a one and done. LFA kind of guy. How did I even find this guy, honestly? um, Yeah, just honestly... A guy that no one's ever heard of, definitely the kind of guy that's on the contender series. I mean, the UFC pulls guys out of absolutely nowhere. But Vanito, Vanilto and Tunis is 16 and 6, once again on a pretty good run in the LFA. And by good run, he won one fight. And I think he's actually the champion because he beat Geraldo Neto. Man, like, this guy's come out of nowhere and beat Geraldo Neto. That's why he's on the on the on the show. I mean, on, on my list, I guess. That's it. He beat Wendell Oliveira. Wendell Oliveira seems to be the kind of guy that if you beat, good things happen to you, and um, I guess a lot of good things have happened to a lot of people. Let's move on. Michael Oliveira is 7-0, 26 years old, 6 foot, welterweight from Brazil, knocking people out, <laughs> silly, 6 knockouts in the first round, 1 knockout in the third round, everyone he has fought, he is putting away. The one time he did take on a fighter with quite a bit of experience, it did take him three rounds to knock them out, but aside from that, he is putting the hands on these guys, man, and he is putting them to sleep, even on the amateur scene, he knocked someone out in 95 seconds, definitely, definitely the kind of guy you would see on Dana White's Contender Series, Richard Martins, 8-1, and one. 
once again, just having a little bit of a run of his own in the LFA at the moment. He beat a 6-0 guy, and then 6-1 and 9-2. and, nine and two. Seven and three before that as well, when he was only four and one. I mean, that's a pretty decent fighter to take on earlier on into your career. Manuel Souza is his one loss, and Manuel Souza is signed to the PFL right now, and he beats him while it made me look like an idiot. Thanks for reminding me. Anyway, Richard Martins, good prospect. Mateus Figlak is, is it Michael Figlak that's in the UFC? Anyway, his brother's in the UFC, actually fighting the weekend that I'm going to upload this video. Well, Tawai from Poland did get smoked by Jim Wallhead, but he's still the brother of someone that's in the UFC. Still a decent fighter. That's kind of it. And then, Victor Valenzuela is from Chile. The UFC, I think, would want more fighters from Chile. He's only 5'9", so he's small for the weight class. But, once again, dominating everyone on the regional scene in Chile, aside from a couple of losses, which aren't actually very good. But anyway, well, we move on from that. Just beat a guy in LFA, beat a 9-4 opponent before that. 9-6 and six opponent before that. It's just kind of a guy. I mean, if, if the UFC wants more fighters from Chile, Victor Valenzuela is probably the guy that they would call on. And it looks like he is fighting out of MMA Masters in the USA. So, is that, unless it's a different MMA Masters gym, and there's multiple of them. He's not. He's training at Miami, Florida, MMA, MMA, MMA Masters. Why did they make it so hard to pronounce? That's it for welterweights. I'm going to make my middleweight video right now.